um, to the to the um, to the UNFCCC, um, be it uh, until until now in the form of national communications first, and then uh, BRs and BURs for developed and developing countries respectively, and from 2024 onwards um, replaced by the BTRs under the Enhanced Transparency Framework. Um, however, um, there's a historical reason why this was um, thought like this, primarily from a developing country's perspective, because the approach to transparency was equated to reporting. The reason countries started building transparency systems when they did was to respond primarily to these reporting obligations under the convention. Um, that changes with the Paris Agreement, because now we have this thing called NDCs, LTS, um, that might be familiar to you. Um, and I'm going to explain in a second why this change in logic is relevant. So when we take a step back and we look at transparency from a different perspective, what we see is that the reason we have transparency is as a process, is a tool. Transparency is not an end in itself. It's not necessarily equated to reporting, but other, um, it's rather a part of a process that refers to activities that allows us to track progress and steer towards climate change related activities and targets. Um, in this sense, it includes, um, as you can see on the right hand side, that's a basic policy cycle where you can see that you start by planning activities, you start implementing, when you do, you track progress, you see how it's doing, how it's going, whether it's, it's doing what you wanted it to do or not, whether you need to correct something, then you adjust and then you know you keep going. That's that's a policy cycle, like very very basic. Um, so then that's where transparency comes in handy because it's what basically gives you all the information you need to implement this policy cycle. Um, and as you can see on the left hand side again, um, when we're talking about transparency, we should talk about data collection and assessment, or what you would normally call measurement or monitoring, the reporting of results to either constituencies or in this case, on the case of reporting uh, or in the past given to the international community and then a verification of what you're doing. And of course, the last step is evaluation of, and learning because as I said, this is a cycle. And now, why is this relevant? As I said before, we the Paris Agreement was, was built also in this logic of cycle, five-year cycles to be, to be precise in the case of NDCs, the global stock tick also has a five-year pulse um, and this, when you look at this image here, you're basically seeing the relationship between the indices, the uh, reporting or the, you know, the ETF, uh, the Enhanced Transparency Framework um, system or the, the Paris Agreement's transparency system and the global stock tech, which is basically the vehicle to assess collective progress. Um, and when you look at this, you would see immediately that what I showed you before sounds familiar and at the end, it's just one big policy cycle, if you look at it like that. Um, it's when you submit an NDC, you, you plan for your activities, then you implement it and you track them through, through the ETF. Then you track progress toward the target again through the ETF and you adjust the activities based on those results. And in this case of the collective progress through the goal stock tick. Um, so the message here is the logic has changed. For developing countries before that, yes, transparency could be equated to reporting, um, not anymore necessarily. Um, and that has, you know, also that means that countries need to start building transparency systems nationally to be able to comply with all these obligations, be it reporting obligations, but also in order to have the necessary information to be able to produce NDCs and adjust them and implement them accordingly um, every five years. Um, so transparency is gaining increasingly importance under the under the international response to climate change. What I had after is a video, but unfortunately, since you could all notice, I cannot share my audio without me being blocked. Um, I might not be able to show it now, uh, but um, I will leave the link for you because um, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to show it without an audio, but it kind of reinforces this narrative that I just described to you. So I think, um, yeah, I think you can all view it afterwards uh, in due pace. Because if I, please confirm you cannot hear this, right? Sorry. Ah. We can't hear anything, Carlos. Yeah, then, then, then let's better leave it up there. 
Um, and now before, before we go into this, uh, this next section, um, I wanted to, uh, to ask you now, now that, um, now that we have set the, the ground rules that transparency is something else, it's, it's beyond reporting, um, we wanted to ask you to please, um, and Lisa, if you can um, help me paste the question in the chat, is um, with this different understanding on, of transparency as being something more than reporting, but rather a data management system in order to exploit other synergies and, and other uses, the question that we would like to ask you now to respond is, um, in your view, what are the uh, the other main benefits or uses that you think um, countries can can harvest from from investing in transparency systems? Um, and for that, um, if uh, the question has been posted now in the chat, what we we wanted to ask you is um, to please think about those replies um, for a moment. Um, I will give you a couple of seconds to think about these other uses that you might um, have in mind. And then when I say three, we're going to do a chat wave. I'm going to start sharing for a second so that I can actually see what you're doing. Um, and the point is now that uh, we're going to do a chat wave. Um, so at the count of three, please, all at the same time, just reply to the question, what do you understand by transparency? No, sorry, that Lisa, it's the other question. <laughs> it's a question on um, what benefits, what other uses um, you see for transparency, for investing in transparency systems. So you can think about it for a second. Lisa will paste it in the, in the chat in a moment. Exactly. And now, now that you have hopefully thought about it, um, at the count of three, I'm going to ask you to please um, paste your ideas so we can, we can all see how, how we approach it uh, from, from the different perspectives that we have. So I'm going to count to three, then it's one, two, three. Please post your, press enter. That's great. Then I can already see some replies coming in. So it says, inform the national investment in climate change as national resources and effort. That's very true. Ensuring sustainable development. Helen says, um, improvement, complementarity and coherence efforts. Amanda says, tracking and understanding progress against implementation efforts. Nolly says, uh, transparency systems provide accountability and enable us to determine the cost benefit of interventions. Peter says, um, I might have joined late. But if transparency doesn't necessarily report, will you elaborate on another perspective? Um, Peter, we will elaborate on that perspective again in a second. Dolly says, uh, find this information. Leticia says, guarantee the fullest implementation of climate projects. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, from the different perspectives, please, if you have other replies, um, keep them coming. We will also document them um, and share them afterwards. But as you can see, there's already um, very different things that you already yourselves can already see um, that can, can, can benefit countries from actually having transparency. Some of them are mentioning accountability, um, others are mentioning actually um, effectiveness in national implementation, financing, um, um, coherence, and so on. And um, that's exactly what we would like to explore now um, with the presentation that Tibor will present to you. Um, so, as, as Jamie said at the beginning, we have de co-developed a paper um, that's uh, called National Benefits of Climate Transparency. Um, and without further ado, what we will do now is I would leave the floor to Tibor so he can walk you through the different benefits that we ourselves have identified in that paper um, for your reference. So, Tibor, um, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, Carlos, and uh, yeah, good morning. Afternoon, evening, uh, wherever you are. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you, and um, it's great to actually be able to see um, that many um, participants already. Uh, even though the very last minute of this uh, um, of the organization of this 
um, but quite important uh, workshop. Um, so if I may ask Carlos, uh, can you share the screen if you are scre uh, sharing the, the presentation, sorry, so that I can start um, right away. Yeah, thank you. And you can go to the first slide. Yes, thank you so much for this. And um, as Carl Carlos mentioned already, um, of course, the question is what are the actual benefits of transparency and uh, why should countries invest in the robust transparency systems, right? So um, um, a lot of policymakers, um, they still consider transparency as um, reporting mainly. This was also um, already mentioned. However, transparency go, uh, goes way beyond the reporting. And that's why we as UNFCCC Secretariat together with, uh, with PATPA and uh, other partners, we've decided to develop this technical paper they would actually respond to, to these very important questions. Um, and it also, in addition to that, it demonstrates um, to policymakers as well as the decision makers and other stakeholders why transparency is so important and can be beneficial for really every single country. So um, this paper aims to highlight what, um, what benefits transparency systems can bring to government um, beyond the, um, the reporting requirements that countries have under the convention and will have under the Paris Agreement starting from next year and the preparation of their first uh, BTRs. Um, so what we try to do in this technical paper is to really structure it in a way to be easily understandable, um, especially for the reader, as the main aim is to enhance the understanding of not only the policymakers and, and decision makers in the government, but also for everyone who would be interested in reading this paper and getting to know more about transparency. Um, so to the broader audience, um, and why and how can a robust transparency system be beneficial for, for that country? Um, therefore, um, each of the benefits that we will actually briefly discuss today, um, you will find that there is an introductory part which uh, which kind of tries to clarify what this benefit um, is about so that you know everyone can understand what, what are we talking about and in addition to this introductory part there are a number of uh, examples from both developed as well as developing um, country parties to really clearly demonstrate um, the benefits in practice so that not only the theory is included in the paper but also um, very much the, the practice and, uh, and the, the, the demonstration of, of how this has been done on the ground. Um, can you please next slide, Carlos? Um, so now, um, in the interest of time and also um, considering that we will have two more speakers, I would try to go briefly um, to walk you through the various benefits that uh, we have identified um, in the paper and uh, and then I will pass the floor to actually the, the two colleagues uh, that we have that will present more about the concrete case studies that are included in the technical paper. Um, so first of all, we have the, um, the, in the first section or the first benefit explains how robust transparency system can help in improving the reliability and the coherence of data, uh, which are really fundamental for uh, um, the informed decision making and also the policy development across various um, sectors in the in the country. For example, we have a, a, a case study um, which speaks to the um, the case study from Japan, which is actually about the establishing how establishing transparency system in Japan um, that aims to track and monitor the progress of the implementation of uh, climate policies and actions in Japan. Um, uh, how it basically, or through this system, um, how Japan was able to improve its effectiveness of, uh, of the climate policies and actions um, in the country. Secondly, the coherence among um, national reporting initiatives, including uh, sustainable development goals, state of the environment, climate issues, and so on and so forth. So here, um, basically national governments have reporting requirements on the various um, international conventions and agreements. Um, and these countries, they 
have to comply with all the international reporting um, requirements efficiently, which is really a, a complex task. Um, however, by developing an integrated transparency system, you can connect already existing systems and also bring coherence between the, the various reporting initiatives that really helps um, um, to make this kind of very complex task uh, much more efficient. Um, thirdly, and the third section um, is related to increasing political buy-in for uh, climate issues. Um, and here, of course, the need for implementing um, efficiently the nationally determined contributions um, in order to achieve the long-term goals of the Paris Agreement. It requires a very, um, very significant political um, commitment and, and leadership. So um, therefore, a well-functioning and robust transparency system can enhance um, the collaboration between the government institutions and also provide um, information that will raise the awareness, first of all, and also the accountability of policymakers and decision makers. And basically, um, which at the end will uh, lead to accelerating the climate action and, uh, and also fostering the political support. Um, the next one um, is the fourth, uh, which relates to enhancing and sustaining um, technical capacity for long-term reporting and, uh, and policy development. Um, and uh, let me move to the fifth one, which is building knowledge um, for enhanced ambition, um, including the international climate process, negotiations, and reporting. And basically in this section and or, or this benefit, um, we use a, uh, a couple of examples where this benefit clarifies how can national reports such as the GAG inventories or biennial update reports of developing countries or national communications. So how these reports can provide a very crucial information um, for countries where when they are stating um, or setting uh, more ambitious climate targets, for example, within the NDC cycles. Um, may I now move to the next slide, Carlos, please? Okay. Um, yes, the sixth section is uh, focused on the improved access to climate finance. And here, um, for instance, um, as you might know, developing country parties should report information on their um, financial support needed and received. Um, under the new um, enhanced transparency framework. And through this information, a country can provide a very um, clear sense of what financial needs and the priorities the country have uh, has. And with or through providing such information in a very clear manner, um, it has a potential to make the, the provision of the um, the provision of in, uh, in international support providers uh, very um, kind of to respond to the national needs and priorities of the of the country. Um, hence, the reporting of this information on support needed, especially, can be seen as a as a tool rather than a requirement of the developing country to kind of report this information it's a it, it can be seen as a tool um, which uh, which can leverage access to international support um, that is based on really the national um, priorities and needs which country can state in the in the report itself as well um, the next um, is the access to carbon markets where I won't go into much detail because we will have a case study um, of our colleague uh, from Vanuatu, um, or the speaker. So uh, I will I, I will spare, probably skip this one. Um, but just to let you know that we will shortly be speaking, or our um, distinguished guest will speak about how can establishing a transparency system support access to carbon markets. Um, the second last benefit that we have identified is uh, supporting accession to political and economic communities and organizations. Um, and here, um, this benefit relates on 
or speaks on how transparency systems can help countries to access and become a member of a political or um, economic communities or organizations, which is really beneficial, not only um, in the in the sense of or in the in the climate context, but of course in uh, many others, and especially the economic context and social context is very important. Um, so there are a couple of examples as well how the transparency systems um, helped countries to access and become member of uh, different um, organizations and communities, for example, the European Union or the OECD and, and so on and so forth. Um, and lastly, um, the technical paper also includes information on uh, how the transparency systems or setting a robust transparency system support um, raising awareness among uh, different stakeholders. So there are examples of uh, stakeholders or engaging with private sector, with uh, non-governmental actors, as well as um, stakeholders at the national level. So all of these uh, have different um, case studies that would be uh, demonstrated or that, that, would, that are demonstrating the, the fact how this is uh, raising the awareness among, among them. Um, and uh, lastly, of course, it's uh, important to also highlight that um, um, that this gender mainstreaming in the climate um, and especially uh, in the, the gender integration in the NDCs as well as the transparency system is very important. And uh, this is also part of the of the section nine of the technical paper. Um, so with this, I think this um, was the brief overview of the sections or the benefits that we have identified in the technical paper that we have developed together with the FATPA and, and other um, partners. Um, so maybe just to um, maybe just to yeah, to move forward and do not delay the, the session anymore, I would like to um, ask Mr. Manuel Garcia Rosel, um, who is a project coordinator of the support project to the NDC implementation process in Peru, um, to briefly speak on of the of the case study that is included in the in the technical paper, and it relates to the private sector engagement in emission management through its national carbon footprint system. So, uh, please, uh, Mr. Garcia Rosel, uh, the floor is for, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just would like to confirm my microphone is working well. Yes, we can hear you well. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, I will try to be brief with this uh, presentation about the uh, uh, Carbon of Peru, uh, Peru Carbon Footprint Tool. Um, Okay, so uh, maybe we can move to the next slide to move forward. Uh, okay, uh, as was mentioned before, my name is Manuel Garcia Rosel. I, I'm working on the Ministry of Environment of Peru. And um, inside that, the work that we are uh, currently uh, doing here, is, uh, we are working on the uh, system of um, transparency. Uh, for indices uh, and for climate action. So in this regard, we are working in different tools to implement this. Uh, this includes, for example, the uh, National Registry of Mitigation Measures, uh, our uh, a system for national inventories, Info Carbono, and also uh, this tool that, that we are going to, to, to explain today, that is uh, a Peru Carbon Footprint, Huella Carbono Peru. Uh, so this tool uh, aims to promote the engagement of uh, entities, public and private entities, in the climate action in the country. I mean, this is uh, very um, helpful to uh, engage the private sector uh, climate action to support the implementation of our NDC. So in this regard, this will support also the, the achievement of the mitigation target uh, which is uh, emission reduction uh, from the business as usual scenario in year 2030 um, of uh, 40%. Um, and also, uh, this will this will uh, 
supporters for the long-term goal of our uh, long-term emission strategy that is currently under construction. And so this tool also includes a, a system of recognition of the of the private uh, or the, the private uh, action. So we can um, mention this uh, in this slide. You can see there are four uh, recognition levels. The first one is uh, the, the measurement of the organization inventory, the UHG emission inventory. The second one is related to the verification by um, a verification body. Uh, the third one is uh, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which uh, shall be proved uh, by comparison between two uh, consecutive inventories. And um, the last one, the fourth is, uh, we call reduction plus. Uh, or reduction plus of the GSG emission reductions, uh, which involves three options that is uh, to achieve the neutralization of emissions of the entity. Um, the second option is the reduction over two consecutive years, and the second one is to support to, uh, to give support a supplier to achieve the, the second management level in this uh, entity. So in the next next slide. Uh, we can uh, note some of the uh, of the benefits of the, the use of this tool. First of all, the uh, companies uh, registered under this tool uh, are uh, get a, a knowledge of the commitment of these, these entities to 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 fight against climate change. Also, it's important to provide information to key stakeholders. Uh, for example, these uh, the results of the of the inventories it can be included in the sustainability reports of the companies. Uh, also can uh, help to set and achieve uh, corporate goals and targets. Um, and we can uh, also improve the linkages between the private entities and the implementation of uh, national policies. And of course, um, as, as was mentioned before, uh, the implementation of, of report systems are related also to the management of, of information and, and to improve the, the management of, of any kind of organization. So in this regard, the uh, opportunity to have uh, as a good practice uh, the uh, development of, of uh, yearly uh, greenhouse gas inventories help the companies to identify opportunities to of reduction of cost. Um, the next slide, please. Okay, so in, in this one, uh, we have to mention some results. Uh, we have uh, from the beginning of the, uh, of the implementation of this tool, uh, I mean, uh, year 2018, um, we have at the date uh, almost 700 uh, reports from different uh, sector entities. Uh, almost 200 has verified its, its greenhouse gas emission uh, inventories and 64 uh, has uh, report reductions. And we are talking about uh, almost one, uh, a half million tons of CO2 equivalent. Uh, also, we can use this information to know more about the uh, uh, action implemented in different sectors. For example, in this figure, uh, we can see uh, the uh, implementation from the academy, international cooperation, private, public sector, and civil society. But we can even see this more in detail to know more about how the companies are, uh, are being engaged in this, this tool. Um, the next one, please. Okay, so this is the, um, the link. If you uh, want to visit the, the website, this is Huella de Carbono Peru. Uh, um, also have to do the queer. Um, and as, as was mentioned before, we have four uh, levels of recognition. 
we can see here the, the logos. And in the next slide, okay, yes, um, the next slide we can see just uh, some next steps that we are foreseeing. Uh, of course, we are looking to, to increase the number of organizations participating in the tool. Uh, and also, uh, we are looking to improve the interlinkages between this tool and other initiatives on sustainability, such as the clean production agreements, and even the, with the, the registry of mitigation uh, measures. Um, also, we are working on the improvement of the IT standards. Um, well, and, 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 and we continue promoting the interoperability to other other uh, platforms, digital platforms. Um, so, just as, as as a final comment, that this is not in the in the, in the presentation. Well, in the, in the next slide, we can see um, some logos of companies that are registered in the in the tool. So you can you can have an idea of the impact of the tool in the country. So we, we are working to to improve this, uh, to increase the engagement of entities in this, uh, even in the pub public sector. Um, what what uh, I would like to uh, remark is that the importance of this tool to, uh, to, to have more information about the climate action from private sector or at the entity organization level, uh, because, um, uh, according with our national regulation, we are uh, working on the implementation of our national register mitigation measure, which aims to uh, monitor the implementation of NDC measures, um, which are uh, led by the public sector, I mean, by the uh, relevant sectoral authorities. Um, on the other side, we have the national inventory, but uh, as, as uh, everybody knows the uh, national inventory is is is, is the, the the great picture of the national greenhouse gas emissions. So this tool, um, Huella de Carbono, gives the opportunity to uh, assess the impact of the uh, organization uh, level actions, and also uh, it's an opportunity to have a more precise. Uh, information and data about emissions in the country. Uh, for example, a specific um, emission factor for industry processes, among other uh, sectors. Um, so yeah, this is my, my last uh, slide. Um, I hope this presentation are being um, helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Manuel. And, uh... Um, yes, I mean, I think it's impressive of, you know, how, how you were able to really um, integrate this, uh, this uh, Hueva Carbono in the, in the system and engage uh, really with private sector, because it's also one of the biggest challenges, I think, that um, we are currently facing. So this is really um, good to hear that, you know, these are, this is also an option how, how countries could approach this, and, uh, and it has, at the end of the day, very... Uh, it's very very beneficial for for both or for all the actors that are involved and uh, it's also impressive to see how many partners um, are already kind of uh, um, involved in the in the process so great to see that um, let me also remind all the participants that um, we will have a q a session at the end of the at the end of the webinar so after the second speaker that that we will have uh, uh, in in a second um, but I would like to ask every um, all the participants if they have any questions um, or comments to post them in chat in the meantime, and we'll collect them and come back to them um, during the Q and A session. Or of course, you are more than welcome to ask the question during the during the session itself. Um, so thank you very much again, Manuel. And uh, let me now move to the second uh, speaker, Mr. Navir Pawar, Pawar who is uh, director of uh, Neo Climate Solutions and uh, worked for the project that implemented the digital MRV system for Vanuatu. And he will speak about the Article 6 readiness and how Vanuatu has invested in 
uh, the transparency system, which actually includes it. So um, thank you very much, Navil, for accepting the invitation. And uh, I now give the floor to you. Thank you, Tibor. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. And thanks for inviting us and share our experience of Vanuatu. Can I share my screen? Yeah, can you please confirm it's uh, visible? Yes, I can see your screen now. If you can make it a uh, full screen would be maybe better, if possible. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, uh, yes thank you screen? very much. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Tibor. And uh, like you have uh, discussed earlier, and uh, Carlos as well, uh, transparency has a different meaning for uh, different people and specifically for the countries like one or two where we have a uh, very limited capacity and very high transition. So we are still working and trying to implement a uh, enhanced transparency framework, not only for the climate change reporting, but also use this as a tool for our internal uh, domestic policy and design. So one or two has developed an integrated system. We call it integrated IMRV tool. It's been developed uh, uh, with the support of UNDP and other development partner. So what this uh, MRV, IMRV tool is, it is the first step uh, for implementing uh, ETF in Vanuatu. And it has uh, mainly five components. So one component is uh, the National GAG Inventory, which is uh, based on IPCC 2006 uh, guidelines. And uh, this module uh, actually helps country to uh, collect the data from the different sector and subsector applicable for uh, for Vanuatu's national inventory and calculate the GHG emission. So it is a very similar uh, to the, IP, uh, the IPCC tool for GHG uh, inventory, but it is a more customized version uh, specific to Vanuatu. So that is one module. Second module is uh, climate uh, change mitigation action module. This uh, covers mostly all the NDC uh, projects as well as non-NDC projects because we wanted to cover uh, all kinds of projects or any mitigation project happening in country to be monitored. So uh, that has uh, annual monitoring of all the mitigation project. Then third component is climate change adaptation component. That is a module for climate change adaptation projects, tracking of the, uh, the adaptation actions and their uh, annual monitoring. And fourth component is uh, on the climate finance flow. So that uh, keeps track on all the finances coming for any mitigation or adaptation project in the country and the uh, monitoring and reporting of the expenditures as well. So these are the four, co four components, which are uh, mostly the part of almost every ETF and the reporting system now. Apart from that, Vanuatu has also looked into uh, you know, uh, uh, monitoring the SDG benefit or the national development benefit of, from all the mitigation or adaptation uh, uh, projects in the country. So we have uh, uh, included one st specific module, uh, which is based on UNDP's climate action impact tool. And so that helps in uh, keeping track and monitoring the SDG impacts from the projects. And output of these four or five components used for national communication, national inventory, DUR, and uh, upcoming BTR. So this is the comprehensive uh, uh, IMRV structure. So uh, uh, like GHG inventory is entirely a separate section in the IMRV tool and climate uh, action tracking for mitigation, adaptation, climate finance support and uh, SDGs. These are the uh, interlinked component within the uh, MRV system. So we do the project level, program level monitoring. It has the internal verification system and consolidated project level, as well as the national level reports can be generated. I'll, I'll show you uh, the operational structure. So it's a web-based uh, MRV system, wherein uh, the uh, entire tool is uh, deployed on the cloud server and with the internet connectivity, it can be accessed by different user groups. So we in the user group, we have the data provider, uh, be smooth, mostly from the different sector and subsector, from private sector as well as the public sector. And it's a role-based system. So each user can have their uh, role uh, and based on their role, they can provide information into the integrated MRV system. So this MRV uh, data, which has been uh, put into the MRV system, it will review internally 
with, by the respective uh, MRV coordinator, nodal officer, and then finalized and consolidated into one place. And uh, so entire management of the system is, uh, is since it's on the cloud, so it, it is easily accessible and transferable to the uh, required reports. And once it's been finalized, it can be communicated directly to the UNF, C or government can use for their own own uh, on, uh, on records it. This is a very good system for when we are working with different uh, development partners across the globe. So assessing the information, project specific information on the implementation size, uh, side as well as the finance side, it makes the life very easy for them. So uh, the entire design of MRV system, is it's been actually uh, looked into implementation of Article 6, and it's uh, been integrated. So IMRV tool provides the MRV or the reporting requirements, as well as there is internal uh, verification system if it's required under the GST. So access to those uh, reviewers can be provided. So they can also look into the entire MRV system, and then it can be connect to the uh, national registry system. So apart from this uh, IMRV tool, Vanuatu has also developed the national registry, which we, uh, which I'll uh, show you uh, just now. So this is how it looks like. Uh, it's uh, uh, with the login credential, uh, one can log into the uh, IMRV tool. And these are this is a a, a, a dashboard wherein uh, the user can look into uh, based on their access right they can see uh, different mitigation action adaptation action finances and GHG inventory reports can be generated on consolidated as well as annual report so uh, yeah this is on the uh, MRV system implemented in one two and it's followed by the national. Uh, carbon registry system. So uh, the basic function of uh, this uh, uh, MRV system is uh, to implement the Article 6.2 and provide a national database which can have a centralized accounting and reporting platform. It moves recording, uh, so it moves project proposal, uh, transaction recording. So all those, uh, uh, the national registry, the requirements of national registry system for, in a, for implementing Article 6.2, that's very much possible with uh, uh, National Carbon Registry. This also has a uh, uh, possibility to linkage with other uh, national registries as well as the international registries, which is uh, which will come up, uh, up later. So with the National Registry, a uh, project proponent from private or public sector, they can propose project into the system. Government can provide the uh, letter of approval. It most can be uh, validated, verified, and issued. And transaction of it most uh, is also possible. So it will keep. It gives uh, a kind of uh, a national level uh, registry as well as the transaction uh, platform. So, like I mentioned, uh, national registry is standalone, but it has the API linkage with the other registries like uh, uh, climate cooperative platform of. Uh, for Article 6.2 developed by UNDP or any other um, multilateral or voluntary registry, which uh, which may come up, or uh, the existing voluntary uh, systems like uh, Gold Standard, Vera, so linkages or the Trust Meta Registry, which is coming up. So linking of those. Well, this is a, a dashboard of the National Registry System wherein a project can be proposed. Uh, this gives a, a brief uh, of the system, uh, total number of projects created, number of project register, it most approved, it most transferred, and it has the graphical representation as well. So project proposal uh, is possible electronically in this uh, system. No need to submit any paper document, uh, though the uh, if required, uh, uh, it can be submitted the paper also, but you can propose or project participant can propose a project with the electronic format. And it's once it's approved or reviewed by uh, the Article 6.2 Secretary of Vanuatu, it can be registered and post verification by the third party. It can be, uh, it most can be issued. So this is an electronic format uh, which we have prepared. And we try to uh, to reduce any paper-based system and make it more uh, comprehensive so that most of the information required for uh, authorization 
can be covered into uh, this electronic system. Of course, the data and documents uh, templates uh, can be revised and they can be attached to the system. Yeah, so once the project is registered, it moves issued. The transfer uh, is also possible like, uh, like any other electronic this management system, project proponent can request for transfer of the ITMOS uh, within the registered account, and it can be post approval. It can be uh, It can be transferred. So apart from uh, uh, the transaction process, this also has the consolidated information about uh, the national GHG mission. This is coming from the IMRB tool. ITMOS, uh, which has been adjusted or cancelled. So all the information on the uh, uh, it most transfer and if there is adjustment corresponding adjustment required that uh, in re reporting information is also possible. So uh, that's the brief on the uh, the two uh, digital system we implemented in one or two. And uh, it's it's mostly kind of work in progress. We are also experiencing more information, more uh, to make it more comprehensive, more user friendly, and the integration with the uh, all the national registries, which is coming in future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Naveen, um, for that insightful presentation. Um, we are about to finish, um, but um, I would still like to open the floor for a couple of questions, if there are any. Um, but um, since I don't see, I will let I will give you some time to post your questions. In the meantime, I have um, one question um, to each one of you, one brief question. Um, maybe I can start with you, Navin, since you are the the person, um, the last person to speak. Uh, and my question is, um, so. The benefit that we were describing is basically that um, countries need to build accounting systems of their GHE inventories and their NDCs in order to be able to participate in these markets because there cannot be double counting of emission reductions, basically. That's the whole idea behind why um, having transparency systems function as a prerequisite um, for, for participating there. And um, it's great to see how Vanuatu has built this interoperability between this registry and the national picture so that you can immediately start uh, or track what has been sold, where, and what needs to be subtracted where. Um, and my question is, I, I'm aware also that Vanuatu has already agreements in place with some uh, buyers, these pilots, Article 6.2 pilots. So my question is how, how has having this system is already in place has that impacted Vanuatu's um, or the buyer's response or willingness to engage with Vanuatu in the first place? Um, how has that been received by buyers, the fact that Vanuatu is already investing in, in these accounting systems? Yeah, Carlos. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a very good point you raised. And uh, the, uh, since uh, uh, Vanuatu is already having the bilateral agreement with the government of Switzerland, so, so uh, uh, buyers is mostly uh, looking into uh, you know uh, the double counting that's like a big issue for them and the uh, the transaction of the ITMO. so uh, so far as per the bilateral agreement with the government of Switzerland we have uh, the ITMO is issued in the Vanuatu it will be first cancelled into the uh, registry permanently and then the new uh, ITMO will be issued into the uh, Swiss National Registry. So it's it's already part of their uh, it most purchase agreement. Super, yeah. So so basically, what I hear is that and, it uh, is, you know, if 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 there are so, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. No, no. Just just uh, wanted to add one more thing. So it is not only about having uh, participating in Article Six Point Two, but there are so many other voluntary registry which are there and there could be uh, any future registries. So the idea is to, uh, you know, at least keep track of the credits which are generating from the country. And once it's generated in one registry, it should not replicate it into other registry. So that's why uh, the national registry is paramount for uh, keeping track of uh, uh, each ton of emission reduction or it moves, which has been, uh, you know, uh, generated in the country and accounted for it. So far, so for the public and private sector, there's no restriction. 
but the uh, government has the accountability on the carbon credits or the uh, atmosphere rating for the country. Excellent. Yeah. Um, as, as we, I mean, we acknowledge that it's a very good practice. That's why um, it's in the study. So congratulations again for that. There's two questions for you. The, the first one is, um, it says, please inform the system is designed or is operational. Ah, yeah. And the other, I think they're kind of connected. The other one is whether the, um, the MRV tool in Vanuatu is publicly available or not. So, yeah, both the system is operational. Uh, uh, IMRV tool is, uh, is since it's the but yes, government is using it. Uh, the climate change department is uh, now operating that uh, IMRV tool. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want, uh, you can have the access and uh, the uh, front end system or the website you can see and look into uh, the different component of the MRV uh, because uh, as per the transparency, all the reports are published by the government. Uh, which is the output from the IMRV tool on the National Carbon Registry? It's uh, it's uh, designed, implemented, tested, uh, but it has to link with the national policies. So the regulation is uh, under revision. Once it's been revised, uh, then it will be uh, publicly available for operation. Great, thank you very much. I hope that replies the question. Um, I don't see any other questions, but as I said, I have another question for Manuel in this case. And Manuel, you presented the case of Huella Peru um, as, as an example of how a transparency-based uh, mechanism um, has enabled Peru to basically engage a specific sector, uh, which is the private sector in this case, and how it, uh, um, it, ha it has allowed you to engage them in measuring their own emissions, um, disclosing them and, and at the same time uh, managing them, no? So actually taking action um, to reduce them and, and, and participate in, in, in Peru's uh, national goals and so on. So my question is, um, was this easy um, in your view? How, how, easy, how, how easy was it to involve the private sector? How did they take it? Um, were they interested immediately? Did they take time to convince? Uh, is this something that you think could be replicated in other countries? Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, yeah, probably there are some elements that I for, forgot to mention during my presentation. Uh, and, and one of, of, of those is uh, exactly that. Uh, for, for the implementation of, of Huella Carbono Peru, we have been working with private sector um, yeah. associations. So this is a very uh, continuous process. We are not only to, to work in the management of the tool, but we also uh, has a very active uh, uh, work to, to maintain engagement through different workshops and meetings and even uh, we have a recognition event an awarding event in, in, in that we uh, recognize that that uh, entities or organizations with um, a better uh, uh, participation in, in climate action regarding that uh, uh, carbon footprint tool use uh, so we we can uh, also mention that we have different uh, private sectors, private uh, different sectors. Uh, for example, the, the semi-production sector or the en energy production sector, uh, where we have different, uh, a, a more active commitments of, of private entities in these in these efforts to to, to face climate change, uh, but. Again, uh, it's important to, to maintain this engagement through different actions uh, from the Ministry of Environment. Um, another element that I forgot to mention, and I, and I would like to take the, the chance to, to comment this, is that uh, the Huella Carbono Peru is not only uh, promoting the uh, measure and, and offset of, of greenhouse gas inventory. We, we are uh, promoting the uh, internal uh, action. So the, the, the first step, it's important to mention that first step in the, in the management of okay, house gases is to reduce emissions into the companies. And, and once uh, the companies can uh, achieve the, the, the low level of emissions, they can uh, offset these this, uh, emissions 
through the uh, uh, use of carbon credits from uh, voluntary carbon markets. So in this regard, uh, we want also to uh, linkage the, the, the demand with the, with the offer of carbon credits from national projects, for example, from uh, the forest sector, uh, which is the, the most important sector in the country in, in regarding the, the greenhouse gases uh, and, and participation in the greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, so yeah, that is my, my comments. Yeah, thank you very much, Manuel. Um, and indeed, I think uh, the Huella Peru system is uh, it's um, very interesting for countries that are looking into how to engage uh, um, the private sector in a way that you know it's collaborative, um, that gives them a, a bit of like a, a retribution in terms of this certification and price. So they also have an incentive to um, to participate and disclose and and help also the efforts of of the country to have a, the best overview that they can of, um, of uh, climate action in the country, uh, emissions, and how to better address them with the collaboration of, of, of the private sector in this case. So many thanks for that. Um, and I don't see any other questions, uh, but I think that with this we can um, start um, closing, Jamie. Um, I think we had two great examples uh, that um, that um, hopefully will give you some um, some interest in checking the, the the document where you can find even more of them and and check again these these cases in more detail. Um, we, as a reminder, we were talking about Article Six readiness and um, and uh, private sector engagement, both through transparency. And what you can see, but I'm sure that Jamie will talk you through again, is that there's a poll that appeared in front of you. So Jamie, maybe you can explain what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, wanted to make sure that we take a moment to capture responses in the poll here. Um, as you'll see on your screen, we have a couple of questions for you all as attendees to get your participant feedback. The first being the webinar National Benefits of Climate Transparency was a valuable event for my organization or country. So please respond, agree, all the way to not applicable. The second is National Benefits of Climate Transparency webinar will help me make a difference in the way I do my job in relation to NDCs. The third question is I am satisfied with my increased understanding of the topics discussed at the webinar National Benefits of Climate Transparency. And the fourth is I am satisfied with the overall quality of the webinar National Benefits of Climate Transparency. So we appreciate you taking the time to fill in that poll. I'll leave it up as we give closing remarks here in, in just a moment. Um, but I want to say a huge thank you to our speakers, Carlos, Tibor, Naveen, and Manuel. As Carlos said, I, I really encourage everybody attending this session to read the Benefits of Climate Transparency technical paper. It's really insightful and has a lot of really great examples. Um, we know that delivering on ambitious, transparent climate action requires multiple tools, LT-LEDs, NDCs, development strategies, MRV systems, and the partnership is always looking and working to strengthen our support to countries on transparency and on NDC and uh, LT-LED ambition. And so we appreciate the commitment of all of the speakers here to sharing guidance on, on how to do this today. And um, I wanna note that through our re recently launched thematic call, we will uh, support and foster alignment between NDCs and LT-LEDs and develop capacity for sustained updating and implementation, which includes efforts focused on supporting the development of transparency efforts. We heard some important key points today to incorporate um, into our support, considering uh, the benefits of climate transparency as countries might consider prioritizing planning, development, and implementation of robust systems for climate transparency. This will require investing in technical capacities, gathering support from political leaders, and engaging all stakeholders, including those from civil society and the private sector. Um, as mentioned at the beginning of our session today, the recording of this uh, webinar will be available on the NDC Partnership YouTube channel, and we will share all resources by email to those who have attended. Thank you very much for responding to the poll today. It's very appreciated. And I wanna give a huge thank you again to our speakers for their wonderful remarks today. Um, Carlos has placed the link to the technical paper in the chat. Again, I encourage you all to um, read that. And then we hope to see you at future sessions in this Raising Ambition Through Partnership series. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a lovely rest of your day.